מיכאי, חמש, שש, שבע, שמונה. See now I gotta put, get lotion, where the lotion at now? Lotion? Yeah. I gotta get lotion. God damn! I came out here looking like that. Oh, it's okay. Well, Jeremy, thanks for sitting down and speaking to us, to our fans. You know, uh, it's been over a month since you've been here, and uh, you haven't said too much uh, uh, to the media, and I think our fans are, are eager to hear from you. Um, so thank you for, for sitting down with us. Um, start you out by just, you know, telling us uh, how you've been feeling here. Um, First, maybe in the Corona environment, and then maybe tell us a little bit about your feelings in the club. Um, corona environment, because that's probably the most important right now what's going on in the world. But um, it's pretty simple for me. I, it's what I do always. I go practice, work out, go home, uh -huh. <laughs> hang out at the house, watch TV, TV shows, things like that. But that part is pretty normal. Um, obviously, Corona has been a thing that's hit the entire world right now that we all have to deal with. And, um, you know, just trying to be smart in, in every moment and uh, continue to get better on this court. Um, in terms of feeling on the court, um, I feel like we're in a great spot right now. Um, we've qualified for the Final Four. We have a chance of winning the championship. And um, we have to come out prepared game by game. And it's not going to be easy coming up against a team that we've played three times in the past month. So, you know, we just have to be prepared and take every single day that we have to get, uh, get prepared for that and come out ready. Do you think that uh, your last game against uh, Nestiona was the first time we, we saw the real Jeremy yes. Fargo? Yes, that's the first time I felt like myself um, in this last month or so that I've been here. Um, so, you know, just trying to build on that and continue to, to be who I am and feel like myself, you know. You're reunited uh, with Coach Katash, which was basically your coach uh, in Galil in your uh, rookie season. Um, Rumor has it that uh, somebody told you that he wanted to cut you during that season. <laughs> yeah, a couple of people told me that. Um, he denies it, by the he way. He did deny it, actually. He said uh, it was probably more a meat guile who <laughs> wanted to do it. But, um, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, and how do you see him differently as a coach back then and as a coach today? He's grown a lot. Um, he's grown. He knows what he wants. He's more demanding. Um, he's always been understanding of the game because he was a player himself played at the highest levels. Um, so, you know, him being a coach and seeing him develop is, uh, is huge and it's actually enjoyable to see. How much was reuniting with him a factor in your decision to come back and play, you know, under these circumstances mm -hmm. that obviously aren't easy? I know you could, uh, you could have participated in the basketball tournament that, mm -hmm. that you won last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, year before last. Year yeah. before that, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so how much did, did that factor in? Probably about probably about 90, 85, 90% um, mm -hmm. coming into a situation where you know the coach is always uh, easier to, to uh, easier transition. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't say it's been the easiest because I don't feel like I've been myself over the past month or so, but um, knowing his personality, knowing how he is as a, as a, as a man, it, it made it a lot easier. We actually had a Zoom call with, um, it was the 10 year anniversary of uh, the Galil win. And we were all on a Zoom call. And I, I said to him, I said, uh, Why'd, why'd you guys come talking to me and then disappear? Say, you, you, you want this? You want that? I say, ah, oh, okay, well, we'll see. And then I guess a couple, uh, maybe a week or so went by, and I ended up getting another call. But, you know, it's always great to be, to play for Dead. Um, he's a great guy. He's a great coach. He knows what he's won, and he's getting better every year. If you zoom out a second uh, uh, from your position as a player, describe uh, a little bit the relationships inside the team. What can you see? You know, you're a veteran. You've been around. You saw, you saw stuff. What's your intake about the team? It's a team of good guys that, that, that have a common goal. Um, Tamir runs Odez's <laughs> um, offense tour to perfection. James has been here for some years, so everyone is, is set into their position and they know what they're doing. They know how to get what they want. And, um, you know, just trying to find my way into that and fit and, and not, I guess you can say, mess it up. Um, and, and that's my goal. And I'm probably doing it a little, a little too much to my fault in terms of trying to fit in. Um, but last game was a big help and it was the right time for it. So continue to go forward and hopefully we can do something special coming to Sunday. Take you back to February of this year, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you got a call up from uh, the Santa Cruz Warriors to the Golden State Warriors, mm -hmm. signed your first 10-day contract. 
had a good outing there. And then Corona. Corona and, hit. Uh, <laughs> corona hit. And I think also I read a statistic today that uh, you were out of the NBA for six years and 346 days. Something. Um, tell us a little bit about that. And did you think you would end up in Jerusalem in, in July when you were... I didn't think I would end up in Golden State. Right. <laughs> so um, we're playing, um, playing in the G League. Uh, we play, I can't remember what day it was, but we play on like, a, say, a Wednesday. Next game's on Friday. So the next morning we wake up and we're traveling to South, uh, South Dakota. Um, it's a game that I kind of had circled on my calendar because you chip back and forth for some players and you want to you want to see those players. So mm -hmm. we're on a plight. My whole goal is to go there and do what we need to do. Um, so we land in Denver as a layover. Uh, phone rings. Hello, uh, Jeremy. It's uh, it's uh, it's uh, Ryan, our GM in Santa Cruz. He was like. Um, where you at? I say, we're in the airport. Um, just landed in Denver. Uh, he say, uh, don't get on the flight. Don't get on the flight. Yeah, you just got a 10-day with the Warriors. I say, huh? <laughs> say, Excuse me? <laughs> so that, that part was, um, I guess you can say, surreal. And um, I never thought that I would be back in the NBA again. Never re really had a plan on doing it. My goal is to play in the G League and play to be happy and, and play to help some guys that's younger than me to get them better. And um, that's what established. That was what was established before I decided to go to G League, and you know that was the whole goal. And then just so happened I end up getting a call up to play for the Warriors, and um, you know it was a good experience. Still talk to Steve Kerr to this day, who's a great guy. Um, everyone around the organization is great, so it was just it was a great opportunity. You just mentioned that. Um you, one of your goals in the G League was to help uh, younger guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't know each other very long. I mean, we have a good relationship and everything, but we've only known each other for a little over a month. And I can see that every practice, every minute you have, you know, you're going to younger guys, trying to help them with little tips, little tricks, you know, mm -hmm. little things that will improve their game. Um, so obviously that's uh, admirable, but do you see yourself, uh, you know, assuming that you're on the second I half of your career? I think that's what I think that's what that little bit is about. Is about me leaning into coaching or some kind of something around basketball out, outside of me playing. Um, I enjoy it. Um, I definitely like talking to Tamir and helping Tamir. I played one on one with Tamir when he was, I think, I want to say maybe 13. We played one on one. I was playing for his dad. And I knew Tamir could be really good, and, and every time I see something that I can help him adjust or something I think can help him, I say it. Um, and some of the younger guys will be out here working out before practice or after. If I see something, I say it. Whether they take it or not, I can't control that part, but it makes me feel like I've done something just to lend the little knowledge that I've, I've picked up along the way. Um, your brother? Mm -hmm. who played in the NBA, uh, I think, for the Lakers, among other teams. A lot of teams. Yeah, a lot of teams. Uh, probably about uh, six teams, I think. Is now with the Portland Trail Blazers mm -hmm. um, in the bubble. Mm -hmm. You speak to him? Uh, every day for the last maybe week or so. Because he has a lot of time. A lot of time. <laughs> other than other than practice in <laughs> golf, he has a lot of time. <laughs> okay, so what 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 does he tell tell you about it? How, how does uh, it? About coaching? No, about, you know, the life in the bubble. Well, how, um, the life in the bubble. Oh, life in a bubble is, um, John Morant had a quote where he said, uh, the bubble is fine, the food is fine, my room is fine, I'm not a silver spoon guy. And the way we grew up, we didn't grow up silver spoon guy. So it's easy for my brother. Mm -hmm. It's simple. He's a coach. He goes to the gym. He lives in the gym with players. Um, he, he still thinks he's a player sometimes himself, but... <laughs> You know, he lives in a gym and he has a golf course. So on free time, he's, he has golf, he has basketball, so he can't ask for any more. And do you think that the bubble idea, whereas like the Israeli idea where you're in sort of home quarantine except for games and, and practices, which do you think is is uh, is the, better or the or NBA how would you bubble? Them? The NBA bubble has to be better for sure because. Obviously, there's a lot more money that's invested into that and finishing that season. Um, but they, they're in Disney World. They have fishing. They have golf. They have, they're going to open up the Disney parks to the players. They, they have everything that they need. They have barbershop in the bubble. They have mm -hmm. everything they need inside the bubble, mm -hmm. which is understandable because every single guy in that bubble earned it. 
Mm-hmm. Everyone that's in the NBA that's not in the bubble earned it. So mm-hmm. um, I completely understand that, that they're willing to, to go to great lengths to get everything done. And the fact that they're going to get it done is, uh, speaks volumes to, to whoever's in charge over there, the NBA Players Association and the NBA coming together to figure it out. 34. You look, Edit that part out. You look like <laughs> your, uh, your body looks like you're 25. I wish it felt like it was 25. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you keep in? How do you keep in shape? Is it nutrition? Is I'm it a, of work? Is it you know, your your athleticism obviously you know, is still there. Um, We've seen you dunk in practices. Yeah, I don't really dunk in games anymore. I just go for the layup, for the reverse layup. Every now and then, yeah. <laughs> but no, um, it's a, it's a, I think it's got to do with genes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My brother played till he was 38, 39. Uh, we are two completely different body types, uh, but it's a combination of everything. I, I live in the gym. I want to play basketball every day. I'm, I'm, I enjoy it. Um, and then the fact that Chef comes with me to Israel, uh, Chef Danny cooks, he has me eating vegetables, which I hate vegetables. Um, so Jeremy, before we go to some small, easy questions, because um, uh, short questions, I just want to ask you, you know, um, obviously this is, a very different time. We're playing in closed doors, um, no fans, the atmosphere, you know, all the energy has to come from the bench. Um, you played against Jerusalem before many times in your career, even in this gym. Um, and the fans were always, the Hapoel Jerusalem fans mm-hmm. were always uh, sort of like against you, against Maccabi mm-hmm. uh, or the teams you played with. Um, what can you tell them? What's your message to them going into the final four uh, um, week? Just stay with us. Um, I know it's not easy because they're not able to come to the games. It's not easy on us that they're not able to come to the games because the energy that, that they've always bought when I played for Galil, when I played in this gym, when I played for Maccabi in this gym and in the bigger gym, the energy's always been supreme. And um, one thing that we need to find a way to feel that energy on the court without those guys. Um, even if it comes from the bench, if it comes from you, if it comes from us on the court, we have to find a way because that energy uplifts us to a whole nother level. And if we can find that level ourselves, the sky's the limit. Uh, we got two games and we got to be able to find those, that energy from the jump, from tip ball on the 26th to the ball going out of bounds or thrown in the air on the 28th. Well, I'm sure you'll be happy to know that you've got thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of supporters behind you. Um, cheering for me, or even if it's from uh, a from distance, huh? <laughs> yeah. um, so a few short questions. Um, give us your words in Hebrew. Oh wow! I I know bad words in Hebrew, so I can't really no, say. No, you it. know the Maze. Everything. Maze. Ma. 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 is my favorite. This Ma. is my Ma. favorite. A guy from Derek Sharp. That's my yeah, favorite. You guy from Derek Sharp. Sadim is people around call him travel right now. So Sadim. Um, I know more. I, I know How more. you say give me the ball? I don't know. Uh, tell could do. The Vili Mine, Bevakasha, Cheshbon, Bevakasha. I know a little bit here and there. So. Yeah, very good. <laughs> 20 years in Israel. You should <laughs> um, what's the thing you like most about Israel? Um, I mean, it is probably your home away from home. It, You've spent, I've spent more time here than anywhere else. Uh, so. It's very Americanized. Everyone speaks English. Um, it's, it's good people around everywhere. Um, good weather, beaches, I guess, even though I don't go to the beach at all. I don't. Lived in Miami for years and never been to the beach. You I don't, don't even come to pool day. No, I don't like, I don't really, I like to sit in the house and do nothing. <laughs> um, what's the like single most toughest thing for you in quarantine or isolation, however you want to call it? Toughest thing, um, just the option of not not having the option of doing things if I wanted to, which I probably still wouldn't do anyway, but just being able to do them if I wanted to. Um, last question, you know, where will we see Jeremy Pargo in 10 years from now? Oh, 10 years from now, probably on a big screen somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Pargo, appreciate it. Thank you. Ah.